this is absolutely brilliant news brilliant news because of my stand you know them for fucking kanye it says Ye spends a second week at number one with vultures number one the rapper known um as kanye west collaborative album with ty dollar sign um, repeats at the top of the billboard 200 narrowly defeating an lp from yeet so Kanye has now spent a second week as a number one album on Billboard. This is really astonishing when you consider the first time he dropped, the the album got pulled off. So they kind of missed loads of, you know, streams and stats and whatnot, because for a couple of days, the, the, the album, or maybe a day, wasn't available on streaming platforms. So people had time to kind of catch up and rack up some n numbers and whatnot. It got put back up again when he found a new distributor and boom, it's been number one, two weeks in a row, even though he came out, even though I think Jennifer Lopez came out at the same time, like just crazy to think about that, right? Absolutely nuts when you think about everything he's kind of gone through. Quickly read the article courtesy of New York Times. It says, yay, the rapper and provocateur formerly known as Kanye West has a number one rap album for the second week with Vultures number one, narrowly beating a new release from Oregon rapper yeet vultures number one a joint lp with a singer ty dollar sign holds the top of the spot of the billboard the 200 charts with the equivalent of 75,000 sales in the united states including 95 million streams and 2,000 copies sold as a complete package according to the tracking service luminate a year and a half ago the always controversial yay became radioactive in the music industry after a series of anti-semitic remarks that left him without a major label record deal or a booking agent late last year he apologized on social media posts written in hebrew just days after after giving rambling rant that included accusations against zionism and the rothschilds do you understand how insane it is that he's number one on the two, two two weeks in a row this guy lost everything some would argue rightfully so personally me i wouldn't say so i think in general there should be a class of people this is my own personal opinion right there should be a class of people that should be allowed to say what the fuck they want there's just people that exist nowadays, especially for the art they create, for the services they give to humanity, who should be able to just say what the fuck they want. It's just what comes with the territory of having a yay. You can't get the yay without the fucking running on stage and taking up the mic off from Taylor Swift. You don't get a yay. You don't get niggas in Paris without him, you know, saying George Bush doesn't care about black people. It's part of his personality. So if you want this guy to exist in culture, if you want him to provide us with great music, great shoes, great clothes, great listening experiences, great concerts, great films controversy it's just going to be part of the relationship we'd have with him so people need to kind of just grow up and accept that as the case now i understand it can be hurtful when a guy comes out at you and says some things towards your community that you don't like but i just think nowadays we just need to accept that more than likely more than likely this guy does have a legitimate mental illness more than likely but he's managing it like the rest of us do because i think we all have a version of a mental illness to different levels of severity he's managing it the way he's managing it he's refused to get help he's refused to get medication clearly if that's the case let him rock let him rock you know what i mean i don't understand what all this kind of trying to get him muzzled trying to put him on a leash thing it's not going to work i don't like it it's not going to get anywhere and when you do let him off the leash look what he does not only is this album number two, like, forget the number one thing. Just imagine doing this collaborative album with fucking Ty Dolla Sign. Somebody who I think has been barely, has, has kind of flat to deceive. He's not really reached his potential. Same as like Jeremiah, where I think Ty Dolla Sign and Jeremiah were always in the same sort of like bracket in terms of like R&B singers who never really actualized their potential. My main criticism of Ty Dolla Sign was that his mixtapes were always incredible right he has this i forgot what the name of it i think it's like a plain thing i forgot the name of it exactly but he's got a mixtape series that's fucking phenomenal ty dollar sign but whenever he put an album together he'd always fall flat on his face they were never cohesive they didn't really make any sense it didn't seem like he knew how to pick beats for himself so he was all over the place but you can tell natural talent singing ability melodies um you know um writing he's on another level and then he gets together with yay he's able to kind of harness that fucking ability that he has and then bang they put collaborative albums together and ty dollar sign has never sounded so good but he's always but if you're a fan of ty dollar sign you'll know he's always had this potential he's always had the potential to be this great he just needed somebody great to kind of direct him and push him in the right way and kanye apart from being one of the best rappers in his generation apart from being one of the best artists in hip-hop you know flat out point blank he's definitely top five he's one of the greatest producers ever people always say about how much he pushes people how much he can bring something else out of you how much he, like think of the rich the kid verse on carnival 
Think of the Rich the Kid, Rich the Kid verse on fucking Carnival. Who cares? Who's been caring about Rich the Kid in 2024? Who cared about Rich the Kid in 2023? Somehow Kanye was able to pluck that guy from obscurity and somehow extract that fucking verse out of him and some other verses too in the fucking album. It's absolutely insane when you think about it. It's absolutely mental that he was able to extract that from fucking Rich the Kid. And it just goes to show the genius of fucking Kanye. It just goes to show. And I'm really excited for Vultures 2 and 3, even though I know they're going to take a long time to, to drop. The fact that he was able to drop this off the back of Donda, which I thought was absolutely hard, but obviously we didn't get to listen to it on major streaming platforms. Someone's really heard of it. But you know especially when you consider this vultures one doesn't have everybody right the song that kind of features the backstreet boy sample that didn't get cleared there's a few other songs and that didn't get cleared and it's still doing these numbers come on man come on let's continue here now yeah he's trying to make a comeback it may be working he released vultures one independently and promoted the album with a pair of well-attended listening events at arenas in Chicago and Long Island. It's Ye's first album to spend more than a single week at number one since Watch the Throne, a joint LP with Jay-Z, which logged two straight weeks in the summer of 2011, according to an estimate computed by Billboard. Vultures 1 earned about 1 million in its first week from sales, streams in the United States alone. That's something that I really do give the guy credit for. The listening events, the listening parties some something that doesn't really make any sense because he does these listening events he holds them in these are massive arenas right these crazy lush venues he has this incredible stage um stage design that he has where he essentially creates this amazing massive open wide space in the middle where he just gets to run around and do whatever he wants to do right with a projector that kind of shows his image up close so people can see him around 360 in the freaking arena but there's no microphones and he still slap now, I personally prefer that. I'm not going to lie. I would prefer to see more artists just do those kind of like, almost like a club performance where you're popping up at a club, you're doing an appearance. You're just sort of like, you know, you just kind of like, you're just lending your aura to the space. You're letting people kind of see your swag, see your crew, see how you fucking carry yourself. But there's no attempt to actually sing or rap because most of these rappers, um, you know, they don't really perform well anyway live. So I'd rather not have you scream over your MP3 than just have you just, you know, swag surf and shit, flex a bit, you know, just stunt a bit and do your thing. But what Ye does is really incredible because it feels like a collective experience. It almost feels like, if it, to lack of a better word, or lack of a better phrase, or lack of a better description, you almost feel like you're going to church. You're collectively all going to church. You're all singing along to the tunes. You're all vibing along to the tunes. You're all just having a good time. And you're getting to see the person that you know and love down there. You hope it's him anyway because he's covered with a mask. But you get to see all the artists that you kind of know down there on the floor doing their thing also. I think that's the main way to go about it. And I think he has created something really special with that. And I wish we'd see more of it going forward because I've long said that I really detest a lot of these rappers who go and perform and just scream over the MP3s. It's so disrespectful to the audience i'd rather you just like play a mix a playlist of the over your best tracks and then just kind of jump around on stage and maybe just kind of like hype man along to your songs but don't rap over them screaming over the mp3 it's really 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 horrible it continues um he opens at number two with 2093 his fourth studio album which had the equivalent of 70,000 sales including 79 million streams 12,000 traditional sales the album which features guest appearances from future and lil wayne was helped by the release of deluxe version and one of them adding a track from drake also this week morgan wallen's one thing at a time is number three and noah cahan's stick season is number four and scissors sos sos is still at number five even though it came out last year Yo, Scissor is powerful, isn't it? I didn't know she was that powerful. God damn it. But yeah, big up Ye. I think it's an incredible feat, especially when you consider his cancellation. He was dropped by everybody. Dropped by his label, dropped by Adidas, um, dropped by his management. Like everybody dropped him and to a point where he's 100% independent. So he must be racking up them streams, racking up the money. And it's incredible to see you can do that at his level. Now, of course, it helps that he's a legendary act. Cool, we get it. But still, it goes to show that if you buck against the system, if you do your own thing if you bet on yourself to lend a term from fucking brendan Shaw, maybe if you have the talent you have the fan base you can make it you don't need a system you really don't need a system to kind of you know carry you along so it's great to see it is i swear to god one of the best things to see and i'm so happy to see it so big up yay big up yay